Hello and welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be doing another tier list for Fallout, although this one's not going to be on Fallout New Vegas, at least especially. We're actually going to be doing all three of the first person shooter Fallouts, I guess not including 76 because I haven't played 76. And this is going to be going over all the DLCs for each of them. So let's begin. First up we have Fallout 3's Operation Anchorage. This was the very first DLC that was available to Fallout 3. And this one has always been kind of an odd one. This one is pretty decent the first time you play through it. I do like the area where it takes place, where you're inside of a simulation, and you're just trying to go through the events of Operation Anchorage that happened in the lore, to where you are trying to recapture Anchorage from the Chinese. That is pretty interesting, although there's not a ton of replayability with this one, in my opinion. Because once you play through it once, there's not really like multiple branching paths that you can pick. There's a couple speech options that you can do. There is actually a lot of glitches that you can do with this one too, funny enough, where you can like stuff all of the bodies, or one body, depending on if you want to kill everybody, stuff all the bodies into the simulation thing and take all of the gear that you get in Operation Anchorage out, making it so you can have like infinite durability weapons, the shotgun, the sniper rifle, a missile launcher, power fist, stuff like that that's actually pretty strong and have infinite ammo for any of these weapons that you get in there. You can also have a unbreakable Gauss rifle that way. You could potentially even steal the Chinese general's clothing, which is like the best armor to weight ratio in the game entirely. So there, there's a lot of stuff that you can do inside Operation Anchorage. Even if you just wanted to play through it, it's not very difficult to play through. You can actually go to this right at the very start of Fallout 3, and that gives you a huge advantage. It gives you the winterized power armor that's basically unbreakable. It gives you the Gauss rifle, which is pretty powerful. It gives you the electric sword, which is pretty powerful. It gives you power armor training, so you can just use power armor later on too. It does give you a huge advantage there, but as an actual DLC, I don't really care for it all that much. The story isn't that interesting. Characters aren't particularly interesting either. I don't remember any of their names, but it's decent. I would say that this one is B tier. I think it's above average. Moving on to a much better DLC, at least in my opinion, is The Pit from Fallout 3, which is probably my favorite DLC in Fallout 3, just because of the stories and the characters. Now, yes, The Pit isn't amazing in terms of like the actual area. The places that you go are really cool, but it's very small. You only have a couple of locations that you actually go to, and once you've gone through the story of the pit, there's really nothing else you can do. There's a couple side quests, usually going back to find all of like the steel girders. One thing that I really, really enjoy about this is that they actually take away all of your gear. I actually really like that in DLCs because it has somewhat of a survival element to it. Not necessarily a survival horror element, at least in this one, kind of once we get to dead money, that's going to be the case. But in the pit, it's like, okay, I don't have anything, I just have to adapt with what I can get, meaning I have to use my wits about me, talk to different people, see what kind of gear I can get, whether that is just food and healing supplies, or if that's extra armor, if that's extra weapons, and then, you know, fighting your way up through the pit in the gladiator arena, I think is a really cool option too. I think the story is great, and especially the big moral dilemma that comes at the end of the pit because no matter what you choose in the pit you are going to be the bad guy and I kind of like that I like that there is no good ending here that there is no right or wrong way to do this there's well I guess there's only the wrong way to do this and everything is morally gray especially with all the characters that were introduced to as well where the guy who brings us there is not telling us the entire story, and where the guy who was running this, who is supposed to be a super evil dude, is actually fairly reasonable, and you can understand why he chose to do the things that he did. So, I actually really, really like the pit story-wise, character-wise, and location-wise. I would say it's S-tier. Major complaint about the pit is it's short, so you don't really have much to do there, and it's very buggy. If you don't have patches for the pit, you can fall through the floor, you can, like, just glitch the game out. Sometimes it will just freeze and crash. I remember this being a real big pain when I was playing Fallout 3 originally on the Xbox 360. And then we have Broken Steel for Fallout 3. This one just extends the main storyline, which is fine. It lets you play after the game is already finished, and there's a couple extra missions after that. But honestly, it doesn't really do that much. Like, I don't really care that we can still keep fighting the Enclave even afterwards. The Enclave weren't super interesting to me in Fallout 3 as main villain characters. The extra weapons that we get in this are kind of cool. You get the Tesla Cannon and a couple other weapons. It also added more enemies and it removed the level cap from level 20 to level 30, which is pretty cool. It also gave us more perks. That's also pretty awesome. So if you wanted to make a perfect character with 100 and everything, this made it 
far, far easier than it otherwise would be. You know, overall, Broken Steel is perfectly fine. I, I like the areas that it gave, but there's not really much story or characters. It's similar to Anchorage. I'd also put it B tier. I think it's okay enough. Then we have Point Lookout. Point Lookout is probably my second favorite DLC in Fallout 3 because the location is awesome. You get a gigantic island to just wander around, search, and there is a lot of fun, creepy, and weird stuff going on on the island where there's everything from old Chinese spies that you can find and do their quests for, where they were supposed to go to dead drops and find and sabotage different things. You could also just go around the town or around the island and find people's like passwords to their safe combinations at the bank. You can keep going back there and unlock mysteries and secrets in there. The main thing that I really don't like about Point Lookout, though, is the main story. The main story, I think, is the weakest part of it, where a lot of the side stories are really cool. A lot of the side locations are really cool. The main story, it's two rich old people that want to kill each other and have been trying to for forever. They're both annoying. They're both very insufferable. I usually end up killing both of them just to get them out of the way. And that's something that I just don't enjoy about Point Lookout. But everything else about Point Lookout, very, very good. So I think I'd actually put Point Lookout maybe... I think I'm going to put it A tier. As much as that pains me, I don't think it's quite as good as The Pit. The Pit has way better characters, way better development. Even though The Pit is not nearly as cool in terms of overall space and area to explore. And side quests are very lacking compared to Point Lookout. But still, eh, the, the main story drags it down that far for me. <laughs> then we've got Mothership Zeta. This one is also kind of a love it or hate it type DLC. At least it seems that way amongst a lot of Fallout fans. Where Mothership Zeta, you go out of your way to where you would get the alien blaster in Fallout 3, and you get abducted by aliens. Then you're on the ship, and you have to fight your way through it. They do take away your weapons, but it's only for a couple of minutes, and then you get all your gear right back. So it's not quite the same as, like, the pit, where you have to get about halfway through the DLC before you can get your gear back. You can keep going back to Mothership Zeta, and there is a decent amount of stuff that you can just keep getting from Mothership Zeta. So it is good in terms of resources, as well as it has some really strong weapons. The aliens are pretty cool, although the ship itself I don't really care for that much because a lot of it looks very much the same-ish throughout most of it. Yes, there is different sections of it, but it feels like there's just not enough really going on in a lot of the sections. Or sections can go on for a little bit too long, where I think the first half of Mothership Zeta is pretty interesting, and then the second half just is not as interesting as the first half. So it's okay. It's probably, again, another like B tier. Then we move over to Fallout New Vegas, where first up we have the Courier Stash. And the Courier Stash includes various starting gear. So this is like the Vault Pack, the Caravan Pack, the Mercenary Pack, and the Tribal Pack, all rolled into one. This came with just the uh, Game of the Year edition of Fallout New Vegas, so if you get it now, you're going to start out with all this stuff, which is pretty cool. This is just purely for a bonus for you in Fallout New Vegas. It doesn't really change much else. There is new weapons, sort of. They're repurposed weapons, so you have the Mercenary's Grenade Launcher, which is a unique regular grenade launcher that's slightly better than a regular grenade launcher. You've got the Caravan Shotgun, which looks nicer than a Caravan Shotgun, but for some reason isn't affected by any of the perks. you got the Broad Machete, which is a great starting weapon. And you've got like the Weather 10mm pistol, which is almost the same as a regular 10mm, just a little bit better stat-wise. So these all give you a little bit of a bonus towards the start of New Vegas, but none of them are really necessary. They do help you out quite a lot when you're first getting started, and if you're brand new to New Vegas or you haven't played a playthrough in quite a while, it does give you a nice little bonus at the start. But for the most part, I would say this is C tier. It's fine. It's a nice bonus, but nothing real crazy and nothing necessary to the Fallout experience. Then we've got Dead Money. Dead Money is very much a love it or hate it DLC, for better and worse. Dead Money was the very first DLC that was introduced to New Vegas, and it is pretty interesting where it is basically a survival horror experience, where once you go there, it takes away all of your gear, you have to make do with what you get, you have to scavenge a lot, you don't have all of your armor, your weapons, your medicine, anything like that, assuming you didn't just run there right at the start. The enemies are pretty tough to where they are difficult to kill, unless you're going with unarmed and the bear trap fist, in which case then dead money's actually pretty easy. There's a bunch of sirens that can just kill you instantly, which makes it so your first time playing Dead Money is going to probably be a struggle. I think it is for everyone. There's quite a bit to do in Dead Money as well, a lot of places to explore, although you are almost always taking damage in Dead Money, and there's a lot of just traps, a lot of things that can kill you very quickly. You're probably going to die a lot in this DLC. However, the characters are really, really good. 
I like the characters in this. Christina is a standout character, even though she doesn't really talk in this. Elijah is a fantastic villain for Fallout New Vegas. He is absolutely terrifying. Dean is a pretty interesting character, although a bit self-centered and selfish. And Dog and God are both pretty interesting characters, too. So there's not a whole lot of characters, as well as you can't go back to the Sierra Madre after this is done, which is kind of a downside to Dead Money. But the whole journey in Dead Money, I think, is actually really well done. And I do like it. I'm going to put this one up into A tier for me personally. However, I can totally understand people saying this is their least favorite DLC and one that they dread going to because they find it annoying. They can find it tedious. I totally get that. Definitely can be gameplay wise. There's also a lot of bugs that are with dead money. Again, if you're playing on PC and you could patch this out, not a big deal. But if you don't and you're playing this on console or something, dead money can potentially be a struggle at times. So, eh. I don't know. It goes both ways. Then we have Honest Hearts. Honest Hearts is a pretty cool DLC where we're going to Zion National Park and we are talking to Joshua, which is really cool. The place of Zion National Park is amazing. It's probably one of my favorite locations in any of the Fallout games. I think it looks awesome. There's also just a ton of stuff to do in it, or at least a ton of stuff to explore, maybe not the most to do. That is one place where Honest Hearts is kind of lacking in both the main quest and in the side quests. Side quests are pretty decent, but they're fairly short. Main quest also pretty decent, but it's also pretty short. If you just wanted to speed through all the missions, you could get done with Honest Hearts in just a couple hours, even if it was your first time playing it. It really benefits more from taking your time, exploring, looking around the place, and kind of piecing together what also happened in Honest Hearts, or at least in Zion, before all of this stuff happened with the tribes and with Joshua. Joshua is my favorite character in any of the Fallout series, I believe, and that is a big bonus to this one. Daniel is also another pretty well-written character. It's just he doesn't really do a whole lot in it, so it's a little bit lacking there. And, like, the White Legs are not the most interesting villains, although they do fit with the Fallout universe and kind of what they were doing, where it's just more of a tribal raiding type of people. So not a whole lot going on there. And again, the main quest and story are a bit lacking for Honest Hearts, but I would still put this one A tier. I still really, really enjoy the location a lot. It's similar to like Point Lookout in that way, where they both have really cool locations. They have a lot of cool exploration areas, but they both kind of struggle when it comes to the main quests, where Point Lookout, I think, does better in side quests. It does much worse in main quests than Honest Hearts, although Honest Hearts is just kind of short, so it's not as great, but for a different reason. Then we have Old World Blues. Old World Blues is an awesome DLC. This one is probably one of my favorites in New Vegas, and I honestly like all the DLCs in New Vegas. This one is where you go to the Big Empty, which is Area 51, or highly implied that it is Area 51, where you get to meet the Think Tank, which are all the most brainy people in the wasteland, and it's pretty entertaining. There is a lot to do in this DLC. There's a lot of places to explore. The side quests are fantastic. The main quest is also pretty good. The main villain with Mobius is amazing. He's probably also one of my favorite characters in New Vegas, where he is built up to be this uh, grand scientist, evil genius, whatever, and then turns out to be a crazy old man that can barely kind of string his thoughts together and usually has no clue what the heck is actually going on, doesn't even perceive you as a threat. So I love that reveal. I think it is just absolutely hilarious. The enemies can be pretty tough in Old World Blues, as well as this is actually like the only place in New Vegas where we're fighting robots and where energy weapons really kind of shine. So if you like using energy weapons, this DLC is fantastic. If you like using guns, this DLC is still pretty good. And same goes with unarmed melee explosives, all that. Still perfectly viable in this, but it is kind of cool once we get out of like the elements of the desert, or at least of the old western type of desert, we're going to more of the sci-fi western desert area thing in New Vegas. So Old World Blues, I would say, is also S tier. I think it's just fantastic. It's just, it hits everything really nicely. Well, I guess the only complaint I have about Old World Blues is the starting dialogue, where it is a gigantic just text wall with all the characters talking, explaining everything. There's a ton of speech checks that you can just hit in the one conversation alone. And then there's like more talking and more exploration that you can kind of do just in the starting area before you actually get into the rest of Old World Blues, where you actually get to wander out and explore everything. So that's my only downside. But again, if you played through this more than once, you could just skip through a lot of the dialogue and kind of know what's going on anyway. The Lonesome Road, I think, is honestly not one of the strongest DLCs in Fallout New Vegas. That being said, it's still pretty decent, though. 
because it's held up a lot by Ulysses. Ulysses is another fantastic character. He's probably my second favorite character behind Joshua in Fallout New Vegas, where his dialogue and his interactions with the courier are amazing, although there is kind of a criticism with it, and that is Ulysses can speak for a very, very, very long time. Not in terms of how much text he has to tell you, it's just he takes a while to actually speak to you because he speaks slowly and deliberately. That can be a good thing. That can also be kind of an annoying thing on multiple playthroughs where you don't necessarily want to listen to everything he has to say and you'd rather just skip through it. As for the rest of Lonesome Road, it is a very, very difficult DLC, which I do appreciate. I really like that New Vegas is consistently difficult throughout, where in Fallout 3 and especially in Fallout 4, not as much. You can get overpowered extremely easy. You can in New Vegas too, just not to the same extent as the other two games, but Lonesome Road is pretty good. I like that it has hard enemies. I like the location. The location is really cool. The secrets to explore are really good. All of the hidden things are really cool to find too in this. It's got some of the best armor. It's got some really cool weapons and it's got some of the scariest places to go to. The death claws here are absolutely terrifying. If you're playing on like the very hard hardcore, they will one or two shot you. The satchel charges are devastating if you step on them, which makes it so light step actually becomes a pretty decent perk to have. Uh, Lonesome Road, I think I'm going to put into B tier. I think it's the weakest, in my opinion, out of the Fallout New Vegas DLCs, not counting something like Courier Stash. It's still pretty decent, though. I still enjoy it, but it's not one of my favorites. Then we have the Gunrunners Arsenal DLC, which this one is just a free DLC, I want to say, for New Vegas. It might not be. I know it comes with the Ultimate Edition, which most people get anyway, or Game of the Year Edition, whatever the heck it is. And this one just adds a whole bunch of new weapons, and it adds uh, some. It adds one perk with Mad Bomber, which is pretty great. That actually helps explosive builds a lot. Gunner's Arsenal is pretty cool. I actually really enjoy it, but it's it's not something that's entirely necessary for you to enjoy New Vegas. So I'd also put it like C tier with the Courier Stash. Then we move on to Fallout 4, where first up we have the Automatron DLC, and this is with the Mechanist. And this one is kind of just okay, in my opinion. This one I didn't really care for as much as some of the other DLCs, especially not some of the other DLCs we've already talked about in New Vegas and Fallout 3. This one is probably weaker than those ones. I don't think it's quite D tier though. I'd say that this one is probably C tier for a couple of reasons. One is that it doesn't take very long to go through and there's not really much of a major conclusion to this other than it's like you can keep doing quests afterwards and you can build robots afterwards. Which, building the robots is kind of cool, I do like that, but it takes up a lot of resources, and when I was playing through Fallout 4 last time, I was playing through on the survival difficulty, which makes everything kind of a slog, where it's, go run over here, kill the robots, run all the way back over to here so that you can build a new robot, because your robot glitched out and won't open doors now, so you have to build a second one, and then you have to build a third one, and the game's gonna crash and kick you out, so you have to restart all the way <laughs> again, and I don't know, I got, like, just unlucky, I think, with this one. So it didn't really stand out that much to me. Just shooting the other robots was kind of cool and seeing more enemies is kind of nice. You can also potentially get more like fusion cores from the robots, at least from some of the bigger ones. So you can keep sticking those in your power armor, which is a bonus. But a lot of the automatron, I didn't really care. I never really used any of the weapons either. There was like the automatron's head, which I kind of like the idea for, but it's basically just the laser musket, but I don't like it as much. Then we've got Nuka World, which I think is a big step up from automatron. Nuka World is pretty cool in terms of location. Downside is kind of where the story is at, where the location to Nuka World is amazing. I really like the area. It's really cool. It has a lot of stuff going on with it, and a lot of the side quests are really, really good. It has probably one of my favorite side quests in just Fallout in general, where you and Sierra are going around looking for, well, I guess it's mostly you helping Sierra where you're looking for the code to actually get in and find the secret to the Nuka-Cola formula. I actually really like that. I really like that they brought Sierra back to this DLC because it's she should be with this DLC. She is the most fitting character for it. This DLC actually starts off really, really strong, I would say, too, where it's pretty interesting. You're going to a location. There's talks of a prize there. You have to fight through some gunners. And then when you actually get there, you have to go through this entire just insane jungle gym insane obstacle course that the raiders have put together for you to fight your way through and then you become the big boss raider at the end of this and i do like that there is actually an evil ending with this i do like that there is an evil route which is way better than the good route in my opinion the good route is 
basically you kill through all the raiders and then you go and do side quests if you want. The evil way at least makes it so you go through a lot more and it extends the story a lot more. I don't like that you're pigeonholed into just playing either as the good role or as the bad role in this one though. And the, the characters aren't particularly interesting, at least the main characters that we have to interact with. I don't care about any of the raider bosses. Some of the side quests do have good characters. Again, Sierra is an awesome character. The magician ghoul that I don't remember his name is pretty great. Sito is a pretty great character too. So it's like you have some good characters and you have some good things mixed in there. And the exploration is great, the area is great, but the main story is definitely lacking. So I'd say Nuka World is probably like A tier for me. It's similar to something like uh, Point Lookout in a lot of ways, where area is really cool, side quests are cool, main story I don't really care about. Far Harbor is up next, and Far Harbor I'm going to also put up into S tier. Far Harbor is by far the best experience in Fallout 4, and it is the best location in Fallout 4. <laughs> well, one of the best. The Glowing Sea is also pretty high up there, but Far Harbor by itself is a standalone DLC that definitely stands out amongst Fallout 4 just in general. The characters are fantastic in Far Harbor, just all across the board, where you have the fanatics in the Cult of Adam, or whatever it's considered, the Church of Adam. They are pretty interesting in their own way. You have Dima, who is probably my favorite character in Fallout 4. It's either him or Nick, one of the two. And uh, he is very, very interesting, especially from start to finish. I actually really, really enjoyed. I liked that a lot. It definitely wasn't something I was expecting there. The location to Far Harbor is amazing. The island is awesome. I love that it changes constantly. The fog is really creepy. The enemies are very creepy and very cool in this. You have a lot of just various side quests and very just interesting areas that you can explore, as well as some uh, behind the scenes things that you can find. Kind of reminds me of Honest Hearts in that way where if you go and explore, you can actually learn a whole lot more about what's going on. And I think Far Harbor actually does the job really, really well. And then we get on to all of the Vault Tech bonus uh, contraptions, Wasteland, and Vault Tech stuff. And honestly, all of these from Fallout 4 are going to go right to D tier. They are probably the weakest DLCs that we've ever had in Fallout, just in general. Things that they give us don't matter that much we get like extra building things, which I kind of like that there is building in Fallout 4 and it does play a role into Fallout 4 just as a general gameplay mechanic, but I don't think it's well made enough for me to want to spend a lot of time like finding resources, building stuff, and making these things like it would be in other games. It's not like something like Subnautica where I could build an entire gigantic area and I can build multiple like stations, multiple areas in various locations where there's a lot of different things going on. In Fallout 4, I never feel that way. Basically, I want to, okay, build a structure, build some beds, uh, build the, the thing to get more people to come here, and then put in food and water, and then I'm done. I'm not coming back. I'm not building anything new. I'm not building anything else in this place because it's just so far out of the way for me to go. Or even if I'm playing on the normal difficulties where I can fast travel, I'm still not going to go there because I'm going to save up all of my scrap and stuff to just build other things. I don't really care about building just a massive structure here because I can't make anything that looks really good. Unless I'm running mods, in which case then the building actually gets a whole lot better. But at that same point, I could just take a mod that has a really nice looking house and just use that instead. So, so these ones I was by far the most disappointed in Fallout 4. And Fallout 4 as a whole really only had like two DLCs that I was kind of excited for with Nuka World and Far Harbor, which is kind of disappointing when in like Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas, we have DLCs that I'm always excited for and that are pretty good all the way across there. This is where I'd put them. Tell me your thoughts down in the comments below. Tell me what your favorite DLCs are throughout Fallout and which ones you really like, which ones you really don't like. I would really like to hear that. You guys take care and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye.